Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's April 23rd, 2014. To my right is Cody Bills and I'm Brock Shimbino. We had another mixed trade in Chicago. Let's turn to the quotes to see how we ended. Corn was up seven and a quarter cents. Soybeans down once again, down eleven and a quarter cents. Wheat in Chicago up just three and a half cents. You know, Cody, like I said, we did have a very similar trade day like we saw yesterday. Although the the losses for soybeans were weren't quite as severe as what we saw in yesterday's action. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing that we can be sure of here is that that we have maintained this bullish trend. And of course, earlier on in the day, we traded down, got close to that trend line, turned right around, traded up for the uh, for half the day, and then near the end of the day, we started selling off here, closing out near the lows of the day. Of course, we haven't gotten right. Down down to that 1457 level there. I think that's where we're going to see some significant support. And if we don't see support, if we break through that, I would think it's safe to assume here that this soybean trend for the July daily contract will have been broken. But let's just keep a close watch on it here uh, on, a, on a Wednesday, um, or actually we'll, we'll watch it on Thursday here um, and see what happens because we are at one of these pivoting points. Uh, Brock, when you look at corn here, one thing is we have bounced off that trend line. Today we continued to move higher here. Uh, really, what was the big driver of the of corn today? Yeah, you know, I think it's just continued concerns about uh, planting progress being delayed a little bit later this week. Uh, tomorrow and into Friday, it looks like some severe weather is going to be moving across the Midwest, so I think that was pushing the market up a little bit. Uh, we also got continued fundamental support from uh, an ethanol industry that continues to run very, very strong here uh, during this marketing year. Uh, we did move a little bit lower on the production this week by about 29,000 barrels, but we're still at 910,000 uh, barrels per day of production for ethanol. Um, you know, Something that is a little bit concerning though is that stocks of ethanol did move a little bit higher today, up by about 566,000 barrels uh, to the highest point we've seen since February. So that'll be something we'll have to keep an eye on moving forward. But still, very good numbers coming out of the ethanol sector. And then the weather coming later on this week, looking for some planning delays in the Midwest is pushing this market a little bit higher. That sounds fair enough. Let's just talk a little bit about wheat. We talked about it yesterday. Once again, that support level continues to hold here. That 663, I think, will have a very significant level of support. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday, it's 38% resistance and you also have uh, a 50 day moving average right there. So I think those two items along with previous lows, that provides a, a big area of support. Not only that, but last week we had commentary about the freeze. Uh, we, we, there, was, uh, there was some studies done, they were taking a look at some of these test plots, and really there was a, a high degree of variability between damage uh, between fields. There was anywhere from 5% to 80% uh, damage. And of course, when they talk about damage here, and when they talk about in, uh, crop injury, um, when they say 50% injury, that doesn't necessarily correlate into 50% yield loss. That may be more like 35 uh, or 40% yield loss. But the bottom line here is that there was damage. Uh, the, the fields that were significantly damaged, it's unlikely that they're going to be able to recover. So that crop, I, I, I think that that freeze uh, last week, it definitely will have uh, some bullish implications here uh, going forward. And I think, you know, when you look at this, we also saw Japan. Uh, buying uh, 108,000 metric tons of food grade um, milling wheat. So that was uh, good to see. Some pretty decent news here uh, for wheat uh, going forward. You know, tomorrow, as far as fundamental news is concerned, we do get the export sales report. Uh, taking a look at what the analysts are expecting for tomorrow's report on the old crop. Uh, wheat, we're looking at 200,000 to 400,000 metric tons. Corn 500 to 800,000 metric tons and soybeans, uh, you know, I think this is going to be the number to watch. We're looking for net cancellations of up to 200,000 metric tons, uh, going to the positive side on 100,000 metric tons. A little, you know, mostly in line with uh, what we've been thinking about here. A lot of cancellations could be coming down the line for soybeans. That'll be a number to watch in tomorrow's export sales report. Yeah, that sounds fair enough. Guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Remember, uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and take a demo of the mobile trading platform. You can get that demo at grainhedge.com, top left hand corner, put in your name, your email address, and your phone number, and you can download that mobile platform and watch the markets live as they trade from your tractor or when you're out in the field. So uh, don't forget to do that, and we'll see you here tomorrow uh, for Great TV.